we have a quorum. Um, Ray, you can start recording. Uh, Rochester Stockbridge Unified Board meeting, special meeting. Um, hey, Carl, can you just give me a, a thumbs up if you're going to be able to keep stay on or if you're going to find another way in? Because I just want to make sure he is here so that we do have a quorum. Carl, are you there? He's there, Ethan. Oh, okay. I didn't see it. Yep. Yeah, he gave you a thumbs up that he was going to be you. able to continue. Great, thank you. I'm staying on and opening the meet on my phone. Great. Thank you. I Now I see that. Great. Thank you. All right. Uh, we are now recording Rochester Stockbridge Unified Board meeting, special meeting, Thursday, February 18, 2021 at 630 p.m. via Google Meet agenda. We've called to order adjustments to the agenda. I believe we have a, adding in a executive session to talk about a real estate issue. Um, uh, so that will be, uh, we'll make that five. And Ethan, I think that um, uh, when uh, Christy put this out, she missed public comment for some reason. So that yes, could be added I too. Yeah, I about that too. Thank you. Let's put that Let's put that at five and six will be executive session and then adjourn will be seven. That will be our change. Um, actually, well, I do have a comment as the board chair, just a quick one. Um, so maybe we'd have to bump all these numbers because that would normally go at three. So if we don't mind, uh, let's, Let's bump all the numbers there. Three become four, four become five, five becomes six, six becomes seven, and then seven will be adjourned. Got it. Um, uh, all in favor of, uh, we have to just want to get a motion to accept the changes to the agenda as moved. I move we, we uh, accept the changes to the agenda as presented. Thank you, Carl. Second. Second. Seconded from Justine. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Great. The yeah, ayes have it. We I have. Yep. When I say aye. Okay. okay. Just to make sure, Jenny. Yep, Jenny's here. Great. And uh, Megan. Megan. Don't see Megan. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. So, quick board comment. Um, just to let you all know that there is an informational, a school, um, it, the, basically about the merger, an informational meeting next Tuesday, the 23rd. I thought that we had one on the 23rd and the 25th, and I may have put out information to that. It is only on the 23rd that we would ask for the entire board to be there, um, to be present to answer questions from the Stockbridge community about the potential merger and unmerger and all the actions that we've taken since to... Um, to uh, address some of the concerns. Um, so uh, I believe that meeting's at seven, Jamie, am I correct about that? I gotta look, Ethan, I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure it's seven o'clock. I just put it in my calendar again. Um, uh, and uh, we would get an invite sent to us by the uh, Stockbridge. We will come on as um, panelists. So we will be present and I would ask that you be visually present because I think it is important for us to be seen. Um, and then we will be asked some questions and um, we'll basically divvy up sort of who answers that depending on who we think is the most appropriate, but it would be great to have a, a good showing there. Um, yes, it is at seven, thank you. Good. Um, do we have anybody who thinks they can't be there on Tuesday, the 23rd at 7 p.m.? Yes, I am not going to be there. I'll be halfway through the bar exam, and I'm not going to be at that meeting that evening. Good. Thank you, Justine. Um, Amy, do you know? Yep, I'm looking at my calendar right this second. And no, that is the meeting that is scheduled, 7 o'clock. So I'll be, okay. I'll be there. Good, thank you. Jenny? Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Great, thank you. Carl? Good, I'll thank you. Excellent, thank you all very much. Okay, moving on. Uh, article or item three, discussion items, the 2022 budget final draft. 
So I, I can just kick things off. And uh, Tara, I don't know if you sent this stuff to Ray. Um, and if you did, or if, di if you didn't, we'll get it to Ray so that we can project it. And Megan just joined us. Good evening, Megan. Um, you uh, indicated to us uh, that you were looking for us to have a proposal that got us underneath the threshold um, without having to use the exclusion. So we went back. Um, there was, since the last budget draft, we had talked to you about a reduction in force within the teaching ranks. We had a retirement announced um, since then and um, for next year. And so we figured in there was uh, significant more, significantly more savings based on the retirement um, as compared to reduction in force. Uh, Bonnie, you want to announce the uh, board who the, the teacher is that's going to be retiring? Uh, yes, I'd like with a, a great sense of gratitude to her to announce that uh, Deborah Burrell, who has been um, an interventionist the last number of years in RSUD, has decided to retire. Um, she has certainly given tremendous support to youngsters um, in our district, and um, it's with a sense of sadness that I recommend you accept her retirement. And is that an official action we need to take tonight? You could hold off until next meeting, um, okay. and we'll have the letter to present to you. Excellent. Let's do that. Yep. So to, to are we going to need to replace her then? No, that was – we. Yeah, so we were going to have a reduction in force. Now we don't have to reduce in force because of that announced retirement. So we were going to have to riff someone based mm -hmm. on the last budget proposal, Amy. But since she is retiring, we no longer are required to have to do that. So the, are, the budget are, that we last proposed to you was down a teacher. Oh, okay. So it had it had room. Okay, thank you. The difference is there's there's more savings with the employee who's retiring versus if we had done a reduction in force. Question: okay. How do we how do we make up for her presence in the buildings? Well, we had decided instead of having 1.8 interventionist at Rochester, that each building would have 1.0 interventionist. 1.0. Yep. Okay. Each building has a full time interventionist. And that was in the last budget proposal. And do our our, uh, our administrators feel that is appropriate? Yeah, we did last time, and I think we still do now. Okay. So the additional change in this budget is that we are proposing, I'll let the principal speak to this, uh, we're proposing that we would go down to 1.0 FTE principal across the two campuses um, and that Lindy would be the principal that goes across two campuses. She has been currently since we returned to uh, in-person learning um, and going across both campuses. And what I would then plan to propose to the SU board here in the future is that with some of our ESSER two money, that we plan to get in regards to responding to regression due to COVID-19 and our recovery plan. You'll see me talk about that in my board report tomorrow to the SU board. It gives us an opportunity to really get moving on this math initiative work that I've been talking to you all about um, at the SU level and locally, really for the last, I don't know, four or five months. Um, Bonnie has a great expertise in math and in curriculum work around math. And she was part of an initiative in her prior SU to support math work. And so I would look to have Bonnie take a role in assisting with that math initiative work over the next couple of years um, with a math team at the SU level. And we could then utilize different pot of money with ESSER funds because we would be addressing uh, COVID-19 recovery um, and that, that those funds that we didn't budget for at all because we didn't know we were gonna get them would help pay for some of that math initiative work. That will be a big, a big area that we'll look to address under ESSER two funds across the SU. But specifically to our set, I'm gonna turn it over to the principals to, for them to talk to you about the why, because we do believe that this is the real, really the appropriate next step to bring your district together as one. 
um, and to bring the, the two schools really together as one school across two campuses, both K-6 camp, pre-K-6 campuses, but to ensure that we have implementation of fidelity and equity across the two. These two principles work unbelievably closely together, but um, you know, we think that this is the next logical step for your district. And I'll turn it over to them. Lynn, do you want me to go first? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, as Jamie said, I we do think this is the next appropriate step. And as I look back over the last uh, couple of years, uh, particularly before the whole COVID piece hit and kind of changed the way that we operated is we have been moving toward this step. We have done uh, joint professional development together in both staffs. We have had some uh, activities that our youngsters, um, we brought our youngsters together to do. Lindy and I have planned professional development, talked about implementation of programs. Um, Lindy's been in our school. So uh, most lately, uh, she's been there two days a week. Um, and I think it just makes sense that this would be the next step that our district takes um, to unify these two schools um, under one district at, at two different campuses. Um, Lindy's highly regarded. I don't have to tell you that. She's an outstanding administrator. Uh, no doubt at all that she's well, well respected by the staff, not only in Stockbridge, but also Rochester. Um, the other piece is that some of the curriculum work that I'll be doing that Jamie mentioned, um, I'll continue to do uh, in Stockbridge and, and Rochester. So it's not like I'll walk out the door and be gone. Um, as Jamie said, uh, uh, I think that one of the things that Lindy and I would be most proud of is the way that we do work together and the way that we look at our SUD kids as our kids and have figured out what's the best ways we can, um, you know, grow the educational program and offer opportunities. So I don't see us working together as changing a whole lot, except there, there will be a single principal for the two uh, pre-K-6 uh, campuses. I don't know if you want to add. And, more uh, well, I just think it's also important to emphasize that staff are competent and capable of this. I think when we both started in this role together, um, both buildings needed some TLC. They both needed support, staff wanted to, and this has started to become the new normal and staff are okay with that and understanding. And we share a lot of staff already between our two campuses. And it's important in unifying us even more that it's one of us, even though I would consider us one brain a lot of times, but um, it's really important. It's a next step. I mean, we've cut significant pieces of this budget out. Um, we need to start thinking about how to unify more and how to continue to restructure more. So we're not cutting educational opportunities from our students. I think you've both, you've heard both of us say that over the years, it's about how this budget can serve kids. And we are at the point where that's what's going to have to happen if we don't start to make some more steps towards that. And it has to start with adults and that's us. Yeah, there's just two other quick things I would say is that within this budget that you're looking at, the budget that Tara sent you, there is a stipend for a lead teacher. So there will be someone who's designated to be the go-to person uh, in the event that uh, Lindy is, is not in a particular building when something crops up. I think the other thing to say is that uh, Lindy and I have approached these two positions with two, I think, really important common traits. We always look at the fact that we are um, we are answerable uh, to the taxpayers of the Rochester Stockbridge communities. And one of our primary goals is to grow and expand opportunities for our youngsters. So as we looked at what the next steps would be in this administrative model, um, we think that this decision we've made uh, supports both of both of those goals, being financially fiscally accountable and um, making way to try and expand uh, and support opportunities for uh, our SUD kiddos. Bonnie, uh, first question. 
Um, do you feel ready for this? I mean, feel. Yes. No, that, yep. I know logically it makes the question, but I know you thought you had another year um, when we talked about this. And I just want to, if this feels right to you. This does feel right to me, Ethan. I, I, I'll say it a little more bluntly because I think it might be the elephant in the table for some folks. I don't feel like I'm being rushed out the door. Um, what I feel I'm doing is taking the next step after a good deal of conversation with both Jamie and Lindy that best supports our sud youngsters, while at the same time giving me an opportunity to do something that I truly enjoy doing, which is working on adult learning and working in the area of mathematics. Oh. So uh, it's a very definite, uh, yes, I do feel ready for this. And I believe Rochester's ready for this. Well, I mean, that, there's going to be more of this. I just want you to say, I, I, don't, I can never overstate what you have done. <laughs> I can get choked up. Well, thank you. Um, you have changed, you know, what you have changed in this school system, what you have turned around the battleship that was headed in the wrong direction that you have turned around, the mentor you have been to Lindy, um, the, you know, Lindy, it's just, when I think about the interview and choosing her and just your advice, when we first showed up at a board meeting and you had three pages of notes for us and I had no clue what it was to be a board member and you taught us and mm -hmm. taught all, you know, all of us and included all of us in this vision that you had that this could work. And um, so um, it's with great reluctance, though I understand, and I, you're right, as Jamie said, next step, next step. But I'm, I, I, I'm so glad you're going to be part of this and maybe part of this with fewer of the headaches and more of the joys of this process. <laughs> um, but to just know, you know, that, um, how deeply we appreciate what you have done for us. Well, thank thank you, Ethan. And what I will say, and I'm I, I'm not I'm not trying to deflect that. I that's heartfelt, and I really feel it. I think it's also given. I don't think I know. It's given me an opportunity to meet some tremendous teachers, meet some tremendous kids, and some tremendous board members. And most importantly, to have the opportunity to work with Lindy and Jamie, even if only for a year, um, has really just been a wonderful part of you know, whatever time I have left to spend in, uh, in education. I will say though, I've overstayed my welcome. I came for, for three, for six months and here I am, what, three and a half years later. Rod, Rochester and Stockbridge are going to be in great hands. No, abs I have absolutely no doubt about that. But thank you for your words. Further, further comments? Um, I just sense? like it. I and, just echo exactly what Ethan said. He, thank you. Yeah, I, yeah. I served that. I think Ethan. I think you summed that up very well. Uh, this is Megan. I just, I, Ethan, you said that perfectly. Bonnie and Lindy, you guys are have been a blessing to us. And Bonnie, I do not want to see you leave, um, but I understand it is a necessary step. I guess I just have a, a couple of questions um, in regards to. I, I agree that this is a, a good step. I'm just, my concern is with COVID happening and it continuing to happen, just how we're going to, is that going to be too much for one principal to take on the contacts, all the, the necessary, um, you know, things that are keeping our schools in person and in session? Yeah, so Megan, I'm happy to speak to that. And I'm, I'm not a big uh, to my own horn type of person, because I feel like uh, my work actions speak louder than words. But I, I want to praise our staff, because what we considered hurdle when we first reopened buildings, they do without support. They're doing the health screening. They know the routine, those pieces of the puzzle. They know the six feet. They know the masks. All those things we just didn't know when we reopened. The staff in both buildings know the drill to the point that they're answering questions as they're asking them when we come to those scenarios. I also would say I've technically been running a whole nother school virtually this entire time. That is true. Uh, <laughs> and, it, and I've enjoyed it. 
I love it. But in person is definitely my thing. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I really love being with in person kiddos. It's just part of the joy and adults. But um, so I think that's what also gave me a little bit of confidence that I, as an administrator, am capable and ready for this next step. I will just like everybody said, be forever grateful for Bonnie's mentorship and also friendship, which is invaluable to me. I know that I could not have started anywhere else as a brand new principal without her. Um, but I really do feel confident and virtual gave me that push and Jamie as well and Bonnie as well that I'm ready to take this step as a leader. And I think it's important for our kids and our staff even though they do see Bonnie and I as one, it's just one more step. Um, and I also am not scared to help ask for help. I, I feel fairly confident in that Bonnie's not really going anywhere. She's just switching hats so that if, if needed, if we got to that point, Megan, we could always ask for help. Okay. Um, and, and you're, I am so sorry. I, you are completely correct in your example of you running the virtual school as well as... No, 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 no. Well, I didn't take offense to that. I just wanted to that, remind you know, that it's kind of been going the whole time. <laughs> it's incredible. And I just have one more question about... A, there's a reduction in administrative staff. Um, is that at the Rochester campus um, or is that the Stockbridge campus? I thought I saw that in a draft. Oh, earlier, an earlier draft, Megan. I just wanted to make sure that if we're, if we are losing someone, you know, an administrator like Bonnie, we, we're not like reducing, you know, the office um, staff that makes all this stuff also happen. So what the budget supports, Megan, is um, a secretary in each building. But what we added was a everyday floating sub. Uh, we brought everyday floating subs on um this year due to combating covid and a lot of teachers being out yeah. and a lot of the administrators um recognize the importance of just having someone that you could count on to sub every day <coughs> and to fill in those gaps so we did budget for an everyday um floating sub that would be there to assist in filling gaps where they they may be and that could include secretarial work so is this somebody okay. that is in each building every day It'll be someone that reports, and then Lindy will deploy them where she needs them to, um, whether it would be at Stockbridge or Rochester. Okay, so they report to our district uh, yep. for the day, and and Lindy puts them where uh, wherever needed. And we still budget, budgeted for additional subs as well, but this is just on top of that. So, but this is like a, as this is like a new staff member. So this is we have them in all the districts now we're using COVID money to pay for them yep. because we knew we just needed people to report it's part of why we haven't had to shut down uh due to staffing shortages plus people being unbelievably flexible but we knew we needed people to show up every day so that we had a bench um and so what we decided to do is to keep those types of folks in certain districts and I would just like to add a piece to something that Lindy said um, when she was talking about the staff has just picked up with these, um, you know, COVID recommendations and changes to procedure, et cetera. Jamie held uh, interviews today for the um, the position of the chief academic officer there. He held final interviews. And one of the candidates asked me uh, what I was most proud about in our district. And basically my answer was what Lindy just said, that I was most proud of our kids, our teachers, um, very grateful for the leadership of the superintendent. Because when, as you've heard the last couple of days, people across the country are struggling with how to open their schools. And we're headed into our seventh in-person month of really successful um, instruction for youngsters. I have no doubt that uh, this this change in administrative model is going to be met just as successfully by our youngsters and our staff, because that's just the kind of people they are. They sort of want to know the lay of the land, want to know what they no. need to do, then they move forward and they do it. I know today was day 100. Mm -hmm. It was. I appreciated the 100, or rather appreciated the 100 jelly beans. 100 m and m 100 m and m <laughs> <laughs> Only because I counted and weighed. Don't tell me secrets, though. So. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, <laughs> so going forward next year, Lindy, you you will not be doing anything with the. Vir- I mean, you may you may be Correct. you're passing on the virtual academy or whatever format of that would be happening. So your responsibilities will just be to our two campus two campuses. Correct. Correct. And as far as the the, the lead teachers that are being being uh, 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 named, will there be one at each campus? So there's someone uh, to step up when when you're at the other building, or is there just be one that rotates? Or how 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 does that model work? I think it's still yet to be determined, Carl, how how that would happen, whether it be one at each that's stipend or if it's one that's shared. Lindy, have we? Uh, you have been uh, coming to Rochester two days a week for the for how long now? Uh, since we came back from in person or from virtual, excuse me, okay. in May. Um, so January after Martin Luther King Day. What is that? Okay. Four weeks. And um, I assume this lead teacher position is something that um, your experience since you've been split to the two campuses, you feel that this would be an appropriate uh, thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Bonnie, are you finishing out the year? Is that the plan? Uh, yes. Because of an underlying health condition, I asked Jamie if I could step away until uh, my husband, uh, underlying health condition, my husband, I asked Jamie if I could step away until we were both vaccinated. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're only about th- four weeks away from that. So yes, I will finish the year as soon as I get back to school, um, as soon as those four weeks tick off. Great. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Maybe we'll be able to do something in person by then to say, you know, wave and fly. Thank you, Ethan. The plan would be just continue the Lindy being in the Rochester campus two days a week, though, Mm -hmm. the rest of the year as part of the transition. Oh. Even when Bonnie returns. Yeah. Um, uh, Lindy, will you be, be leading faculty meetings and staff meetings at Rochester or with Bonnie there? Or how, how is that going to transition? We're still kind of working those okay. pieces of the puzzle out. Okay. Um, but yeah, we will start to do that. Ultimately, the goal, I got to be honest, is like bringing some unit more so unity together. So it's one staff meeting. It's not two separate campus meetings like those that's the next step we're at we are at the step where bonnie and i have been doing stuff very similarly on both campuses but still sometimes separate we're now at the step that makes sense that we start to bring both staff together to have the same conversation and make sure everybody is on the same page um and that's that's a little bit of sanity for me, because it's got to be the same. Uh, there's great unique pieces to embrace on both campuses, but those are things that can be shared and done on both campuses. Um, but also that idea that we can just really offer these robust, even more so professional development meetings as a whole staff. Our staff crave that because they're so on an island by themselves at the grade level that they teach. So when we bring them all together, they have something they don't get on a normal basis. They get to share instructional information with each other, share different strategies, do these things. And um, while we've been doing that on the half days, the next step is to do that as a whole more frequently in our weekly faculty meetings, data points, all those things. We just, it's another step to be unified. Gotcha. I think I think another way to say that is, is that there that there probably is nothing that is going to happen under this new model that hasn't happened to some extent already. Joint professional development, joint faculty meetings, joint conversations about youngsters, sharing of expertise. Lindy and I have been working on those things for the last two years. So um, this is sort of just the natural next step, I think for our faculties. I, I, I don't think it will be a huge um, a huge step for them. And when we were virtual in the spring, we actually ran all that together anyways as one staff Good. to Good. save folks some screen time. <laughs> Very good. Um, 
do we need to uh, act on this in any way tonight? Well, well the we budget document the no. budget document essentially is your policy statement, Ron. Okay, yeah. right. Gotcha. Go. I had a couple more questions. Yeah. About Go for it. Right, well, we, other, could, yeah. we could just do hand raising if people want to bring in other questions about the budget. Yeah, uh, that if we're ready to move on, um, I yeah. just was, had yeah. a question. In okay. Great. So, uh, my question um, had to do with the um, uh, the last budget draft. Um, it was noted that there was a reduction in the. Um, no, let me. Let me it, is the yeah is the music reduced um, in this budget from what we're yeah. talking about here? Yes. Okay. Now, yeah. um, and I see that it's a 50-50 split between the campuses. Um, and I do notice our student body is a 34-66 split. Um, does the 50-50 allow for appropriate music at each campus? So the Positions being restructured as a whole in general. She will has an outdoor ed background as well, Amy. So she will be doing music and outdoor education. I mean, students would receive the same amount at both campuses, Amy. Right. Okay. Um. So uh, does that reduce her her overall employment with us to not full time then, or to not one point oh? Yeah. She, um, still, she is still a 1.0. No, she no. will not be a 1.0. She'll be 0.8. Ooh. Oh, that's different than I understood. Okay. And, the, and that, that is what was in the last draft as well. No, I know, I, but I didn't understand it as that. I did not. Okay. So, so that. Um, and just so I can jump in. So, what we did was, sorry, this, just so I want to make certain everyone's clear about what we did. Yeah. The, the music position has been reduced to incorporate outdoor ed and music at the equivalent of a 0.8. The other 0.2 has been used, the reduction in force there was then used to provide 0.2 foreign language. We didn't feel like we could add money to the budget or an FTE to the budget without finding an efficiency somewhere else. So what we did is we used a 1.0 position and changed it up to be music, outdoor ed, and then in the additional point to a foreign language. So what is the addition of the um, outdoor education specific person? There's no the same, person. same person. Same person. But wait, what's the divide between music? Is music point six and outdoor ed point two? The, what I would say is the contract will say point eight music slash outdoor ed and then as lindy goes to build the schedule with the teachers i think that that will dictate what the percentages are um do we have i mean i know this is well this is kind of executive session stuff i mean uh, i just you know i mean i really want foreign language i really want foreign language but is this the same no this is not executive session i mean this is what you guys talk about it's what well, you, know. it's I, what I, you I want to prioritize I want whether foreign, it's and I, I mean i think you know, the board talked about this. We want foreign language um, when we when we brought the idea to it. Um, I also want to keep a really um, a good music program as we've had. And I don't want to send a message that is there anywhere else we got a point to we can get her up. No. OK. I mean, in principles, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we believe we can do this without cutting programming. Well, I just, you know. Yeah. OK. Does it cut we, the position? We were, we were a position? bit overstaffed in that position. But it, does, it cut the, does it cut the position in terms of um, health care or benefits or anything like that? It does. Yes. Okay. Because we I mean, can for, a, for a school district your size, a 1.0 music, that's a lot of music. I think you, you, you struggle to fill that that amount of staff. Yeah. I mean, one of the examples I could give you is Sharon, who has 160 students, has a part-time music teacher at point four. In Rudd, their two elementary schools together have a 1.0. Okay, good. Thank you for those examples. Okay. 
Um, I think we had Carl had his hand up. Uh, Amy, are you done? Well, I I had one more question. I'm done with Go that topic. It. I do have other, another question about the um, RFTE because uh, I have a handwritten note on that it was reduced by 0.2 um, in the last budget. What does that make that position now? Then is it a 0 0.6, 0 0.5? No, it makes it 0.2. It has been reduced to 0.2. So it was 0.4 currently. Yes, and it's reduced to 0.2. Does that help? Yes, that's what I was what I was wondering. So that is that. Um, uh, Point one is one day. No. Point two is one day. Point two is yeah. one day. Okay. So the idea would be that that that, that position would complement the foreign language. So yeah. that you would schedule them so that they would they would flip when you're when you're planning your schedule. Okay. Yep. So that those two put those two positions would complement themselves when okay. Lindy goes to build the, the schedule. And what is our library position? What's that uh, FTE? 0.2 on both campuses, so 0.4 total. And that is um, two separate staff uh, members, right? Correct. Okay. Okay, I'll step back for a minute. Good, thank you. Carl is next, and then Jenny, and then Justine. Um, uh, a couple questions for Tara. So I see that, you know, we, we've taken the... Uh, um, 3,100 food services transfer out the $56,000 food transfer out. Um, but it doesn't seem like we really increased our, uh, uh, SU assessment. I'm assuming that the food transfer came out because it's gone. It's all been centralized. Is that not so? Is it getting billed to us later? I thought that's yes. the, so we are, in an attempt to centralize food service for FY22, that has not that decision has not been finalized yet. But we need to determine where food service will start, and then it will become an assessment after that. Okay. So we've taken the initial general fund transfer out of the local districts because when it becomes an SU program, you're not going to transfer money from your general fund to the SU specifically for food service enterprise fund. So right. it will then be billed back at a later time once so, we to determine and establish the how it will work. But in the meantime, we're looking at a forward facing document that doesn't have any expenses for, for food service. Yeah. It shows us $89,000 of the reduction in this total expenditure budget, 56,000 of that is the, well, we're kicking the food service can down the road. I really can't, I, this budget really needs to have some sort of estimated food service cost shown somewhere because I can't, I can't believe that it's going to be free. So I, 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 I really think this budget needs to have, needs, needs to reflect that. And we can't just say, well, it's a fee that we're going to pay sometime next year because this budget is supposed to cover all the fees we're going to pay sometime next year. Um, the second question I have is it looks like we're Do you want an answer to do you Carl? Oh you yeah, go ahead and answer the first. Answer so, the first Carl, so Carl, I mean, the idea is, is that food service is an enterprise fund. And so the idea would be that we would open up an enterprise fund. If it's at the SU level, run food service for a year, see where that enterprise fund comes out and then build budgets the following year based on that. We wouldn't have to assess you out on that enterprise fund at the end of next year, just so you know. So that, will that be a two year, we'll be paying for two years at one time? Is that well, what, what we're gonna discuss with the board is a two phase plan about food service around next year centralizing and then the following year looking at how could we possibly find even further efficiency. That would be a regular year assessment to the from the SU to the local districts. And you, sorry, make this into a timeline for me, so I understand. Uh, I don't know what an enterprise fund is either. And if the and the key part to this is, let's say the SU board decides they don't want to centralize food service. Yes. If you guys run a deficit within food service in the enterprise fund, then you'd have to address that at some point, but it wouldn't need you to address it immediately. But it would be a deficit we'd carry over to next. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, Possibly. based, 
I think Arsa is going to have to do something different with food service, period, right? I mean, 56000 a year is more than half a teacher every year that you're losing. And so whether we centralize it or keep it ourselves, I would say we have to do business and food service different. And you'll see on Monday, your per plate cost at Stockbridge is $13 a plate. So it would behoove us to look to do something, change something within food service. And so you can add the money back in here. I'm just saying we don't know if that's going to be going to your enterprise fund. And the SU doesn't plan on assessing out that enterprise fund next year anyways. So but then where would the SU get the cash flow to run said enterprise fund for, for, a, for a, a, a year for free? Well, I mean, we get reimbursed, what, Carl, from the state and federal government based on our reimbursement plans. Right. So those are that we have to establish those as a SU wide enterprise fund, not eight individual enterprise funds. OK, I'm just so we have to basically build the enterprise from the ground up. OK, and it will be funded by the SU and the reimbursements that we get from the states. Right. I just have feds. a problem with a budget that doesn't, you know, that, that, that doesn't have any money for food whatsoever, because I, I, I mean, we need to we, we, we historically have paid that and putting in a placeholder for 50 grand, um, assuming we're going to find, say, 10 percent efficiencies or whatever right away. I think that's more transparent than than just trying to show that we're saving ninety thousand dollars over last year because we're not billing we're 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 we're, we're not paying for food this year. I mean, I, I just I, I really have a problem with with the budget pretending that we don't have food in it. What are other SUs doing with? How are they dealing with this in their budgets that you've talked to so far? Other districts. Well, I mean, obviously, some of them are also getting rid of their. Their, their food budgets because it's going into this enterprise fund. Are they all going along with that? Well, I mean, we've had these conversations with each district and a lot of them have decided that they weren't going to tackle the food service issue this year. They weren't going to worry about funding their enterprise fund. The so hope would be that we so centralize it to the SU, we run it at the SU level for a year, and then we tackle the enterprise fund the following year. So you're saying most... most oh, all are all, I mean, a bunch of them uh, are Tara, not, yes. do not what have any money. What carried any money for food service at this point? Okay. That's the question. Do you hear that, Carl? I mean, does that change that we're not the only ones? I mean, you guys can definitely picking. budget it. I'm just saying that I don't plan on, I don't, we don't plan on assessing that out next year. Well, so the, the, the 56000 that is in the budget for the current year that we are using now we're not going to probably not going to have to make that transfer so that money right but that money no. the, we, we transfer that money to pay for the food our 13 dollar uh, a, a plate you know uh, uh, meals but right? what about the money that we're getting from the state and federal government to feed the kids amy you're going to see our sud continually leaks that money out in food service on monday mm -hmm. Carl's absolutely right. I can't, I can't fix a $13 a plate issue. That That's our issue, right? Like it, our, our cost with staffing and benefits is such that I can't produce enough plates to make up that difference. There okay. are other districts right now running in the black, but our set is not one of them. So let's just get to, let's uh, let's stick with this for a sec because I think we need to know a consensus going forward with the board. Um, Carl, we've heard your point. I think we need to hear from other board members if we feel we need some money in there or whether we um, essentially trust our SU um, advisors that this is going to work out for us without gouging us. Um, I hear Carl's point, but I'd like to hear from everybody else and see what you think. Amy, how do you um, feel? I, yeah, it's a little bit of a surprise, but I, um, I, I'm fine with it. I, I think that they are, uh, SU has a plan going forward, and, and I trust that plan. Um, I also know that we still you know, are dealing with our uh, fund balance that is in um, 
a surplus uh, that we're going to be working through. Um, so I'm not, too, I'm really not too worried about it. Okay. Uh, Jenny, what's your thoughts on this issue? Yeah, I definitely understand the point, but I also, um, you know, would look to Tara and Jamie trust that it sounds like they have a plan to move forward with this. So sort of look to them for direction on this. Okay. Justine. Um, yes. Well, I, well, I, I, I feel the same way. I was, I was curious about that and kind of in, uncomfortable with it being um, open, but the plan does seem reasonable. So I, I feel like I'm okay with it. And Megan. Hmm. Um, I guess I, I, I under I guess I understand the plan. It makes me a little definitely makes me nervous not to have something in there and that it's going to um come back to get us. That seems to be usually what happens. Um but I'm gonna trust in the administration and know that we have a plan and hope that we aren't gonna find ourselves in the situation where we are in a deficit. Well, I I I certainly see the political issue of this with some people who you know, challenge yeah, SU, SU central control. Um, um, I, I, I think there's still a major trust issue that's being uh, rebuilt by the SU currently um, uh, in terms of handling our money and being trustworthy. Um, so, um, you know, we're taking a leap, but I'd say that's a, a majority uh, feels like we're going to go ahead with the plan and the budget. Um, unless we feel, Carl, you feel we need to vote on that. That seems like a, a, a consensus. And then we'll get to your second question. Okay. Um, yeah, I can't support a budget that pretends that we're going to get free food. So, you know, I'll just vote against the budget. I really think that, I, 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 I really think that, you know, not having some, I mean, we put $56,000 in there last year at the recommendation of, of our business manager, because that's what, uh, she assumed was going to be required to fill the gap between the federal reimbursement and the money we collect from our families and the costs of running the food program that we run. We intend to run a similar food program or we intend to feed our kids similarly next year. I can't in good conscience support a budget that, that, you know, doesn't, uh, doesn't address or allocate some funds to that. Um, you know, that's just, I, I, I'm even you know, even like though I, said, I, I, I just I, I just feel feel that way. So, I mean, I can vote against it. even though even though there is a plan and they they feel like this isn't going to come back to bite us. It's going to be a way to assess later how it comes back to us. Yeah. I mean, I got to say, if food, sir, if you guys centralize food service, Carl, we're not assessing you out on thirty one hundred on that function code next year. We're not assessing out that enterprise fund next year. Right, but you're you're there. there there's got to be. So you would budget for it, food. and it would just stay in the general fund. You're gonna run. You'd run a surplus, or spend it in other places. That's well, what I'm, you're gonna, you're gonna tax people on that on that money, and we're not gonna assess you out on it. So Jamie, then then explain this to me like I'm five. Where does the money to pay for next year's food come from? It would come from us getting reimbursements and fees across the entire SU and looking to do business very differently. Okay, so we'd be getting... So if we run, let's say across the SU, you're going to see SU-wide, we're running deficits in food service of over $300,000. So the idea would be that we trim that significantly. We run food service as an SU for a year. We see what is it that we actually run as far as a deficit, if we centralize it. We'd have money coming in throughout. It's not like we're gonna run out of money in that enterprise fund. And then the following year, we would assess the districts out. You would budget for it next year based on your percentage of the SU budget. But the enterprise enterprise fund can run a deficit. It's not like the general fund. It's a whole different fund. Right, right. No, I I, I understand that. But the the I, I question whether 
So what it sounds like the core of your argument is, is that you believe that we can run this at the at the SU level um, in, in such a way that the base expenses of all the cafeteria personnel, of all the food that we're buying, will be covered by the uh, reimbursements we get from the families that are paying in and from the federal government. It's not going to require any dollars from the district. That's I correct find for that, next I, year. I find, yeah. I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I find that very, I mean, put in half the money then. Let's put in, let's put in $25,000 as a, as, as a food service placeholder. But I mean, we put in placeholders to cover, you know, uh, predicted uh, contract settlements when we don't know what that money is going to be. Um, I think putting in, you know, but I, I think putting in $0 because, you know, we have, I have not seen this plan that tells me how all that money is going to, is, is, is going to cover our base operating costs. And we're going to get to, we're, we're, we're going to get to a, uh, a, a place where we don't need some, some sort of subsidy. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, well, I, I, the I only thing I can luck. base that off of is other districts don't do subsidies nearly as large as you, and they've been running hundred thousand dollar deficits in food service year after year within their enterprise fund. And we still feed the kids. I mean, I just, we can you we can budget it. It's just that the only way that that's going to actually come out of your budget is if we don't centralize it. If we centralize it, we don't plan on billing the districts for it until after the first year. That does. I mean, it, it does keep sounding like. And that, at that point, it becomes an assessment, Carl, after the after year one of centralizing food service. So in FY23, when you build a budget for FY23 and the SU builds the budget for FY23, food service would then become a portion of the SU budget in FY23. But won't we have been under budgeting for that amount by a year? Because yes. Hold place yeah, everybody will. We don't know what to budget is my point, right? Like we could have, we could have just thrown out imaginary numbers at every district well you yeah i mean you could say as a placeholder throw out some percentage um, but we weren't planning on assessing back after until after the first year well I, and part of it is it's a two-phase attack that you hear about at the su meeting that i need to talk to some still some personnel that i'm not comfortable talking about right now in public okay um i just want to jenny yeah you raised jenny raised your hand could you get in here Please, thank you. Um, so when it gets billed back, would that be retroactive billing for this year as well or just next year? No, we, we just will use it to build the budget moving forward. And once you hear the full plan, the idea would be that we stop running deficits in food service and that we start running food service at a place where it's neutral or even possibly hopefully in the black. That's the goal with this. Megan, <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna um, have to agree with Carl. I'd like to see a placeholder in there because we have we are potentially gonna put nothing in the budget for something that we haven't actually decided on at an SU level officially. Yeah, no, that's I mean, if you guys are banking on you keeping your local district food service, then you can definitely put a placeholder in there. It's not banking. I just want to make sure that the you know that we're not left out to drive in case it does not actually get taken on by the SEO. Well, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, we, we, we have to prepare this. We're, you're asking us to vote on this budget and maybe we don't vote it on tonight because of that. Maybe we wait and see what the SU decides um, before we, before we uh, go ahead with this. How do we, that's a good feel? point, Ethan. Uh, how do we feel about that? I mean, here's the thing, you know, we put $25,000 in there. And that I imagine there goes there goes our foreign language. Um, that's the kind of trade offs we're talking about right now. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I guess what I would say is you asked us to come with a budget under the threshold, and that's mm -hmm. what we did. Yep. And you said make it hurt, and part of the hurting is having yeah. to look at food service. Well, and food service, and you know, other things that you know, good good staff members, things like that. Uh, Jenny, you raised your hand again. Um, if I'm looking at the correct document that Tara sent around, and I, I assume that we'll be looking at it, but it looks like we're about 
$300 under the threshold. So it does look like if I'm looking at the right document that there's a little bit of wiggle room if we wanted to add a placeholder in. Yeah, Tara, do you know how much wiggle room we have to the, to the threshold? Mm -hmm. And actually, it'd be nice to know what, what $25,000 will do if we don't worry about the threshold. If we just worry about the penalty, like we had the last time we looked at the budget. Yeah, right? That's what we meant, Ethan. The yeah. Oh, the threshold. So we, we're not under the... We are under the threshold. And I'm going to ask Tara how much you could add back not to get over it. Got you. $55,175. So you could easily put in... 20000 Yeah, you could put in holder. anywhere up to... That will take you right to the threshold at right, 55,175. But if we if we take if we add twenty back, just so there's something there, um, can we still get foreign language and keep all the other staffing levels as they are? Yep. Yeah, you can add up to that fifty-five thousand in. Well, I think it's always older. I'd, I'd and say still keep under, everything else. Under 50%, 40%, is that, Amy, you've got your hand up. What do you say? Uh, yeah, I was just wanted to say I don't want to reduce our programming and our education um, because of, of the food. Uh, so I do understand, Carl, and the comfort level of having nothing there. So I see the direction you're kind of going now with putting something I, I don't think we should go all the way up to the threshold. Um, uh, put fifty thousand in, but maybe maybe put twenty in or or something. Um, I'd be comfortable with that. I, I just I don't want to reduce our programming for what we're offering that, education for our kids just because of of this food. I, yeah. I agree, and I think I think that you know I, I you know, Jamie has delivered on on the majority of his of his promises fairly well. You know, I don't, I'm not trying to, to, to completely doubt him, but I, I, I find it hard that we get from zero to 60 in a year. So yeah, let's put in 20 or 25 and I'm, I'm suddenly much more comfortable. Um, Justine. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. I think putting in 20, it, um, is a good idea. It's a good placeholder. It m does make me feel more comfortable. Um, I definitely am not in support of, of, um, taking away any programming uh, in place of food service, but I am hopeful that the plan that Jamie is presenting is, it sounds really good to me. So uh, I'm hopeful that that's going to work out. I'm okay with it either way. Megan. I am comfortable with if we put in a, a $20,000. Good. And Jenny. Yeah, I'm good with that. Good. Um, I don't think we need to, make that as a motion right you just take that in advice. no we'll just add it and then if you guys are willing to support the budget tonight tara will have the new figures for you guys um just want to get lindy bonnie um how do you feel about that 20 uh, just just to, i mean you may not change our mind but i just want to hear it i may not listen I just to you, feel I like if twenty thousand dollars in addition was to be added back into the budget we could have added some programming back. I have a lot of confidence in Jamie and Kara and what they're doing. Like a ton of trust. And I know kids aren't going to go without food and I understand the concerns behind it, but you're, you know, you just expressed a concern about the music person not being full time. Yeah, I would echo. I would doing echo. this instead of listening and hearing out what Jamie's full plan is. Well, that would mean. Yeah, I would, Ethan. I would just say this. I I think this is. I mean, I would echo most of what, or I would echo what Lindy said. I think with the music outdoor ed program, what we always have to keep in mind is that as positions become more part time, they become more difficult to staff. Yep. So a point eight position may or may not keep our present music teacher. I. That's um, I'm worried about. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think. Uh, Jamie's plan moving forward, a, a number of districts are moving in that direction for the very simple reason that they can't sustain these small food programs and they can't pay for themselves the way they're presently configured. So 
I well, have to be, I have to be bluntly honest. If I had twenty thousand to put back into the budget, I would put it into programming for students, and I would give this program a, I would give Jamie's plan a, uh, an opportunity to unfold. Well, I'm I'm going to make another proposal, and that is the other option, which is uh, we don't approve tonight. Uh, we wait until we see what the SU approves this program, and uh, we come back and do approved buy on this budget um, on March, at our March meeting. I'm fine with that as well. We might have we might have some more clarity around a higher yield rate that may that may make some of this penny pinching um, not as uh, uh, painful as well. I agree. Um, okay, Amy, uh, Jenny. Uh, it, Carl just brought up a very good point. Do we have any idea when the yield will be finalized? No. No. no, but that that's not going to change your equalized pupil. It'll help your tax rate even more. And we will right. update your tax sheet as soon as the yield changes anyways. But, you know, the, the issue for us really is we did lose a couple equalized pupils again, right? And so that well, that's not helping like us. And the threshold is about the per pupil spending. It looks like compared to draft three, we actually increased uh, equalized pupils by two. Well, it did, Amy, but you still lost them from last year. You're still down from last year. Oh, just yeah, last year. I just Now, is that number finalized, the equalized pupil? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so we've, we've, we've got a couple of different ways, but I, I hear this as an important issue. Um, we've heard that um, $20,000 was a good idea for a placeholder. But then we realized that it could just don't forget that we're looking at a bare bone, you know, really down to the bare bones ouch level uh, budget, which is what we asked for. Um, and that sounds like our administrators would actually like that twenty thousand dollars back to, to spend in programming, perhaps even a little more. Um, we if we have a fifty one thousand uh, dollar gap, maybe we give them twenty. We, we, we maybe what's the cost of moving the music and outdoor teacher back to full time? Yeah. So I was just going to say, I think the board could do the twenty thousand placeholder, Carl, and you could probably move your music teacher back to full time and we would just be barely under the threshold. I could be wrong. Tara loves it when I say those things and then she has to start trying to yeah. write back, back right. the. 12 things of code, but. Well, is our concern that the threshold or is our concern the actual increase in tax rate? Because what this budget provides is, um, you know, nine cents and nine and a half cents in Rochester of an increase and five and a half cents in Stockbridge as an increase. Um, so it, as we increase the expenditures, we're going to increase that tax rate. Is that what, what's our goal? Is it, is it to keep, is it the threshold or is it the tax rate? I, yeah, that's a good question, Amy. What I had heard was you guys wanted to get under the threshold the last time we met was to come forward with a budget that was under the threshold. Um, and so that's what we did, but we also tried to get under enough to also get your taxes down the best we could. But don't, that's don't why forget, we didn't come just under it. Don't forget, Amy, that also last time you said, based on the projections going forward of what the budgets were going to be and tax rates were going to be, uh, we actually felt pretty good about last budget. Though I just want to put this plug in your ear. I'm not, I hate the, I'm going to say to be fiscally responsible, you need to remember we're in a pandemic and people have lost jobs and are struggling to make ends meet. I know we're significantly below what was projected at the merger, but there are some folks that this may come down to. Like, we also want this budget to pass because there's nothing else left to change in it, obviously, as well, to support our programming. So we have to kind of keep that in mind, too. People, you know, there's lots of different levels to this. And I just want to advocate for the fact that that could put a significant hardship on folks and say, no, you got to figure something else out when they go to vote. Well, we need a, I mean, we have, we've got a whole slew of other questions to ask here. Um, uh, I, th I think we're a long way. I, I don't think we're, one, I don't think we're ready to pass this budget yet. I don't think we, I, uh, I think we've got too many issues with it still. Um, but that's, that's what I'm hearing anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's all, it's up to what our consensus is. What do we
we want. We've got we've got basically three different proposals. We accept the budget as it is. We put in a placeholder amount of 20. We do not pass the budget tonight and wait and see if the SU will pass this program um, and then come back and revisit. Just so you guys know, I didn't plan to ask the SU to take action on this until their March meeting. I wanted to get a consensus if they wanted to move forward with the SU wide plan and then have them vote in March. But that means we wouldn't have this decided for us. So if you guys are uncomfortable with not putting money in, I would say you should put a placeholder in if you want to wait to see what the SU votes on. Other well, districts didn't feel the need to do that, but I would, I just, in just being upfront with you guys, I wasn't going to look for the SU to vote on that. I was going to look for consensus around were they thinking that they wanted to go that way. Um, but I wasn't asking them to vote on it. Well, then we've got, I, I think we need to do some voting here. I think we need to just make some decisions. Um, there's leave as is, add 20 placeholder. Um, I don't think without him asking them, I don't, we can't wait till April uh, to approve. This no, budget. no, we can't buy the warning. So I, I'm going to, you know, at this point, I would advise you to put money in if you're worried about that. That's why I'm bringing that up. Well, and I think um, then there's two options. We add we add the 20,000 placeholder or we do not. And I think that does need to be a vote um, uh, at this point. So um, let's say um, I will, uh, well, let's, let's get a vote on, um, do we add 20,000 to this budget as a placeholder for the food budget? Um, I don't know that we need to do a motion on it because it's not, um, it's, it's just changing that, right? Yeah, but so do we have, do, has Tara given us a cost on, on restoring the music teacher to full time? I think she's working on it, is my sense. But I, I, would almost that want to yoke, I would almost want to yoke those two questions together. I agree. But Very I can tell rough that number. Was. Very okay. rough number. $11,744.07. So 30000 30, roughly would get us there. Both. I would say just to give yourselves cushion, you would mo you would you would you would direct us to add thirty five thousand to the bottom line. I mean, that's what the board essentially votes on, anyways, right? You guys vote and approve the bottom line. So, when yeah. you I would that gives you a you could we could add that into the food service, and then you know we could add that full time teacher back and add the additional money into the food service transfer line. I would certainly personally just love to put that. Um, uh, vote of confidence, vote of financial um, policy behind our music program. I'm so, okay with that. So that's a number of $35,000 is what's being suggested. I suggest we say yes or no to that. Um, and I'll call the roll here. Carl? Yes. Justine? Yes. Megan? Yes. Amy. Yes. Jenny. Yes. Ethan. Yes. Good. Here we go. Woohoo. Did, hey, did everyone way, follow what I said? So we'll add the full time music and I think that will give us even a little more than 20 and we'll put it on that, that function code line for food service. Hey, can, I, can, I, can we wave the flag a little bit more about the fact that we're gonna have a foreign language program next year? Cause I'm really, really excited about this and I know we're not publicizing it enough, but we really need to talk about it a lot more because it's been something we've wanted for several years. So anyway. Yeah, it was one of the original things when we came together that we said we dreamed of. So, yeah. Okay. And more importantly, we surveyed our community and they dreamed of it too. Yes. Yeah. This was this was not just our idea. Well, and um, here's the thing. You you did exactly, I just want to, Jamie, Tara, Lindy, Bonnie, you did exactly what we asked you to do. You came in with ouch. We said ouch and we came back. And that's exactly what we asked you to. So thank you very much. Um, the ouch was clear, I think, for all of us. Um, good. We will now carry on with Carl's second question. And then I, I think um, yeah. the, the second question is just that uh, do all these uh, labor costs in this budget reflect our recently settled uh, uh, contract uh, uh, agreements and 
our most recent guidance on where health is uh, going to end up. Tara, yes, correct? Yes. Yes, sorry, I'm doing the calculations in the budget. But yes, this, this budget draft, as have all the others that we've presented, takes into account the settled teacher's contract and the increase in health insurance rates. Thank you. And, and then my, my, my last yeah, And question. sorry, and sports staff. And my last question is, um, have we heard from the, uh, uh, the, 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 the trustees of public funds in Stockbridge that they intend to uh, uh, you know, give us the, 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 the same funds they've given us before? Yes, I've spoken to Bill Letterton, and we're, we're good. Great. To um, then uh, that's it for me. Good. Let's go back to, I, I'm sorry, I, it's been a while since there were some questions here. So uh, um, who else has questions on the budget moving forward? Anybody else? Megan? Megan's no, I, I, I feel comfortable with the questions I've asked so far. Okay, good. Justine? No, thank you. My questions have been cleared up over time. <laughs> good. Jenny? Same. I have no more questions. Good. And Amy? Um, yeah, and I, I kind of asked this before, but we've kind of gone away from it. So um, this, the outdoor education specific person from last uh, round that we were going to have one day a week for each campus, is that um, the same person for both campuses or is it um, in each campus there it's there uh, has a, a lead person? Right now, it's the same person. So then, okay, same person. Thank you. Yeah, it will be next year. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. And and just thinking going forward, and I don't want to make you know our teachers nervous, but I just uh, this idea of traveling teachers, um, it's proving to work really well, and I'm wondering if it could work um, in potential. And I'd love to see some thought about this. Personally, I would see, and may I see what the board thinks about, because my opinion individually doesn't matter, um, uh, about the idea of traveling um, grade heads, if we could do that. Instead of moving classes back and forth, if we have grade head teachers going back and forth, and if that's another economy that's down the road for us, potentially, with scheduling, you know? When even when you say grade heads, do you mean like a grade a four grade teacher? Who play, teaches both second grade in Rochester and in Stockbridge. I don't know. We'd have to put our thinking caps on around yeah. Yeah. that. And it, it, there may be a way within a content model to do it. Well, I'm just saying, you know, if you're unifying, you're unifying, you're unifying. I mean, this is what you're talking about. It's all staff, it's all together. Um, it's the logical, to me, it's a logical step, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to scare anybody because that's obviously down the ways, but I, I think it's the next logical question. Um, if we're really, and so, as I said, I don't need an answer tonight. I, I'd just be curious to know, Amy. What have you got? Uh, yeah, I think that this is all, this is great conversation and discussion that we're going to need to have going forward in a different forum, maybe as like a round table kind of thing to just kind of hash out and get ideas out on the table. So I, well, if, even if it's even something we should even be contemplating or not, you know, um, uh, just the seems, seems pretty logical in some ways, but um, maybe not at all. Maybe, maybe you have good convincing reasons why it's not possible. Um, so good. I just need some think time. <laughs> I guess yeah, is the Justine. I think it's very interesting. It's a very interesting idea. I've been thinking a lot about ways to to kind of combine the the schools in different in different uh, in different ways. But I also wanted to explore because we have an outdoor ed teacher. We haven't spoken a lot about what that's going to look like either. So I think it would be great to have some time to kind of work at work together in a round table situation on both of those topics, how to move faculty around and use them efficiently and creatively and what outdoor ed even means in the future. Oh, let's put those as agenda items for March. That would be great. Um, that said, I think we're at a point where we're ready to vote on our budget. I just wanted to, I'm sorry, Ethan, I just wanted to, to make a, 
a, a quick comment to your idea about rotating teachers. Um, I recall hearing, um, I think it was at a, a VSBA thing, but there was a, a discussion of alternate models like that. And they talked about actually getting away from like grade level teachers and going to content area teachers. I've heard about so that. that instead of, instead of rotating fourth grade teachers between two campuses, you're rotating your math and your humanities and your um, science or your STEM teachers uh, 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 back and forth. And you're, and you're uh, uh, consolidating the learning, you know, by like kind of content area versus <laughs> then, then by grade level. Just so you're all aware, some of that is already happening within buildings, especially at well, the upper grade levels. I remember us, we've talked about that before. Yeah, we definitely talked about that. I know in Rochester, at least, um, people having specialties, um, uh, teachers having specialties. So, uh, Justine, you put your hand up again. I just put it up again because I, I think that's a really interesting idea that I have thought of in comparison to Rochester when I went to there had an integrated middle school. I know it's not, it was a different level of education, but um, I definitely have, have thought about that idea, not in a full, um, quite as full of a way as, as Carl brought it up, but I wanted to thank him for bringing that up because it's something I've been thinking about. And Jenny. Yeah, I'm just going to comment on kind of what Lindy had said that at least in Stockbridge, I feel like some of that's been happening with the literacy teacher. And I feel like more so, especially at the, um, the virtual learning academy, that's already happening. Um, my daughter has one teacher for math and another teacher for literacy. Um, so I can kind of see that, something like that expanding. We, we, we know we're headed down um, a financial tube of some sorts. And I think we have to be innovative and we have to be groundbreaking in our thinking to make sure we get great education um, at a way we can afford. That's, and so this is, might be an out, out there. Okay, uh, and if there not being any more questions, I think we're ready, to, um, enter, ready to entertain a motion and uh, that we accept the 21-22 uh, budget as proposed. Is that proper how do we do no, it? No. We need the new number. Oh, yeah, gotcha. you're going to need the new, new education uh, spending and per pupil spending, correct, Tara? Do we have that uh, printed out so somebody can read it as opposed to having to memorize it? Or just, I think I'm gonna add, so more. just for transparency, I'm going to give you a tax sheet. I'm going to share it on my screen in a second. And it's just going to show that we're adding the $35,000 that you wanted us to add to it. It's not going to show you the breakdown because I'm still working on doing the breakdown. No, that's fine, okay. Tara. They just need that overall number. Yep. And we don't have to prove the warning tonight or anything, right? No, no, no. But this will let me get to work on it because you've got Actually, another Ray, I'm going to PDF this to Ray so he can share it. Oh, thank you. So as we're waiting for that, no, the, the next thing on your discussion, just to give you a highlight is, which will help us with the warning, is the board needs to actually take formal action to move that we would vote via Australian ballot. The board has the authority to do that, but I need you guys to take action on that tonight if that's your desire. Oh. Um, hey, Jamie, I sure had heard you say 45 minutes a couple times, I think. <laughs> <laughs> don't you know this is our side? I thought you guys were going to be we don't ready to rock and roll tonight. I just, I've emailed uh, poor David twice and said it's taking a little longer. Uh, you know you us. Guys are, you guys are awesome. We we can't we can't we just no. I, we had to talk about that. That was that was exactly no, was what you wanted us to talk about. You wanted us to get down there to where we were like actually paying attention. I mean, everybody pays attention. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> we really did. We we you know where we're debating. No, it was perfect. I was debating the real issues of where. Now, I need you guys to really you know assist me at the SU level with food service. Oh. Carl, you're going to be there for me, right? <laughs> I'll I, be there. I'll be there probably more for me, in my opinions, but I'll, 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 I'll support you. All right. Well, I'm glad you mentioned it because I forgot to have it in my calendar. So there you go. Monday evening. It's a full packet, so you'll all get it tomorrow. I, I waited because... We, we just interviewed our finalist um, tonight for the CAO. So you'll get their resume tomorrow in your packet. Cool. Tara, you got that number or are we waiting for Ray? 
I just emailed it to Ray to put up okay. on the screen so you could see everything. Great. Um, it's just a motion adding thirty-five thousand dollars. I can move that we. Uh, well, we'll, you, we'll want you to approve. Um, just the, the right. Uh, part. Oh no, he's going. He's got it. It's going to come up. Let's wait for it. No, Tara, this is the right one, right? <clears throat> Considering we're we're still going to be under our three hundred a three hour right. uh, minimum. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, sure we are. Sure, sure, no problem. Tara, will you let them know what you need them exactly to say? Because I know there's there's certain language. Yep, I need you to accept the FY twenty two expenditure budget of four million three hundred twenty eight thousand seven hundred and fifty two dollars. And you can see we added the thirty five thousand yep. underneath where Ray highlighted to get that, and then which results. In an Act 68 education spending after local offsetting revenue of $3,226,848. So I got to say. I move we approve a uh, FY22 budget of $4,328,752 which results in an X68 spending amount of $3,226,848. Second. Seconded by Amy. Any discussion? I think we've done that so far, but just give a moment. I'll call the roll. Uh, Amy? Aye. Carl? Aye. Jenny? Aye. Justine? Aye. Megan. Aye. Ethan. Aye. We have a budget. Very good. Thank you all. Okay. Moving Thank on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, administrators, principals, uh, for for making some things that you must have winced to do. Um, so I appreciate it. I know it's hard. But we're going to have foreign language. OK, moving on to action uh, five two Australian ballot for annual meeting. Um, I think this can be pretty straightforward, right? Yeah, uh, I actually have the wording right here of the motion great. from <laughs> you want me to read it. Absolutely. Thank you, Amy. In pursuant and to act 162 of 2020, I moved to conduct the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District's 2021 annual meeting using the Australian ballot voting methods for all articles. Is that Second. it? And seconded by Carl. Um, uh, let's go right down our list again. Uh, Amy, how do you vote? Aye. Carl, how do you vote? Aye. Jenny, how do you vote? Aye. Justine, how do you vote? Aye. Megan, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Ethan votes aye. The ayes have it. We are by Australian ballot. Good. Um, we are now at public comment. I will go to our list and we will start with Joanne Mills of Stockbridge. Do you have a comment for the board? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Oh, good. Okay. I've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to say I'm pretty excited about um, the promise of um, what's going to happen. I, I think Bonnie has been awesome for us, and I, I'm excited that she's happy in her new endeavors. Um, and I do think that Lindy will do a super, super, super job. Uh, watching over both schools, and um, I'm going to have an open mind about this one. I think that Lindy will. I I I think it's going to be really good. Um, I would like to know what the foreign language is. Do we know yet? Not yet. No. Now that the board approved this, um, 
budget, Joanne, then we would look to move to post. But I haven't right. even talked to Lindy at all yet about what that posting will look like. Well, it's, it's very promising to hear that we're going to get, you know, one of the things that was on the list um, in the very beginning of the merge. So I appreciate everyone um, following that. That's really, that's really wonderful. Um, so anyway, that's all I have to say. I, I feel a little bit um, lighter about this. And, and thank you so much for working hard. Thank you, Joanne. Much appreciated. Karen Rubin, do you have a comment for the board? Yeah, the only thing I'd like to say is you guys did a really fine job this evening. I'm very impressed and happy with the, the work and the thought that everybody gave to this. And I appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you, Karen. Much appreciated. Uh, moving down, Patty Harvey, do you have a comment for the board? Pat Harvey, do you have a comment for the board? No? Okay, I'll move on. Tim Pratt, do you have a comment for the board? No? Okay. Um, um, one phone number, 802 star star 38. Please press star 6 to unmute and identify yourself, please. No comment. Keith, thank you. Welcome. All right. That concludes public comment. Thank you all. Did you, I believe, oh, Charity. What? Oh, Charity. I'm so sorry, Charity. I missed you. Yep, you were up the top. My apologies. Charity, please give us a comment. That's okay. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, two questions. One is quick. I'll ask that one first. Um, Justine kind of hit on it earlier, but... I know I'm definitely confused and not really sure what direction it means when you say you have an outdoor ed role. So I know you mentioned you're going to try and add more discussion in about that at the next meeting. And that would be greatly appreciated because to me, the vision I have in my head is, does that mean a playground monitor? I don't really know because this is a new type of role that I never experienced as a child. So I'd love more information on what that person's role is and how it pertains to like educational piece of it. Yep. Um, my other question is clarification from Jamie or Tara. When you're talking about the food service program, it goes into a one year enterprise platform first at the SU level. Um, does that mean that it becomes a perpetual one year retroactive program? So the budgeting that you do is in year one gets paid for in year two and year three gets paid for. It, it's, it's continually perpetual. Like some of the. That, that is exactly happen. what we're proposing charity. So yep. it's not that there will ever be a true deficit. It's just, there's a one year deficit carryover. So it's a, always going to be a one year balance out. And I think that that's a concept that's hard for some people to understand because you're always going to have a negative number that's never going to balance in its same year. Um, so I understand why there were people that were discouraged by that concept, but I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of our federal funding for programs happens that way already and has for decades, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And other, certainly other districts do go about their food service this way. Um, but it's certainly not how we've done it. And what I, we're looking to do is take the opportunity, if we centralize, to go about it that way, Charity. But you just said it in a much more articulate way than I did. And that's why I'm the superintendent and not the financial officer. So thank you. I, I very much appreciate, Charity, that simple dynamic of the backwards as makes all the difference in explaining this. So um, I would um, advise Jamie and uh, Tara to add that into your discussion with the SU and maybe a diagram too. I like diagrams. Charity, do you have anything else? No, that's it for me. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thank you, Charity. All right. Um, that concludes our public comment. Hopefully I didn't miss anybody else. Um, and we are now uh, ready to enter, uh, ex uh, I, I'll entertain a motion to entertain, uh, enter executive session um, 
for real estate negotiation. And uh, we want to invite in, I believe, David Rowe and uh, Jamie and is uh, and Bonnie and Lindy. Is that correct? Okay. Terry, you go home, my friend. Who? Me? I told Thank Tara. You. No, I told Tara she could go. Oh, home. okay. Gotcha. Good night, everyone. Good night, Tara. Thank you Bye. so much. And Ethan, I just emailed David. So. Okay. Good. So we all know we have a separate link to go into executive session. Let us uh, go there and um, and we will return to close out the meeting when we're done and take any action if needed. All right. See you there. Uh, I move that the board authorizes Jamie Canarney to sign the uh, uh, subdivision permit applications for both the town and the state. For the Rochester High School. For the Rochester High School. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. By Justine. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I heard enough. It's so Thank moved. you, everybody. Have a good night. Good night, David. Um, the other action is that uh, the board has instructed our lawyer to craft a letter response to the select board. Uh, we hope that letter will be going out uh, tomorrow or Monday. Thank you all. Um, that completes our action for tonight. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Look at this. We did two hours, people. Two hours. <laughs> I moved to adjourn. Thank you. For two Thank items, you. for two agenda items. Yeah, two agenda items. So that's about right. We're about, you know, an hour per agenda item, I think. Good. Uh, we have a move motion to adjourn. Somebody second. second. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Bye. Bye. Good, Bye. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Hey, good night.